We have a, a vote that we need to take this morning. I know it's January, so we're not talking about the President of the United States. We're talking about uh, a couple of positions here in our church. If you look in your bulletin on the right hand side, the right panel, we have Bianca Clinton as deaconess. Bianca, would you raise your hand? She's battling a cold right now. And then we have Denise McNally as our women's ministries director. I know you can't see Denise, but she's, well there, yeah, she was sitting way back there. Well, here's Denise. And uh, so we want to vote them in as um, in those positions and uh, women's ministries director in fact if you are interested in women's ministry events and being assistant you will see a sign up sheet in our in our uh, assembly room so i would like to from a tempe church member hear a motion to accept these two individuals and i saw jacqueline van sant's hand going up she motions it. Is there a second to accept them? I see Judy and Todd's hand right, at the same time. So all in favor that Bianca Clinton and Denise McNally as deaconess and women's ministry director respectively, if you are all in favor of them taking these positions for 2020, would you say amen? Amen. 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 So those opposed, whisper amen. <laughs> All right, so it is now official. Denise, congratulations. You are our new Women's Ministry Director for 2020. And Bianca, thank you for volunteering to be as part of our Deaconess team. So welcome to you as well. We are so thankful that these two ladies were willing to take these, uh, these posts and serve the Lord and His people. So thank you so much. Okay, and I see somebody holding up a card. If you have... One of those cards that you filled out that's called help what you need to do is after the service today put them here in this basket and then our uh, prayer team will pray for your request today i have a pep talk that i want to give you so um open up your bibles or have your bible ready we're going to look at a couple of texts or have your bible app open on your phone If you look in your bulletin, the uh, message is the value of volunteers. Now, when you think of a volunteer, let's play a word association game. When I say volunteer, what's the first thing you think of? Service, work, responsibility, assistant, what? Free, <laughs> yeah. free, time, time. Giving. giving. Good heart. What was that? Good heart. Good heart. Yes. Time. Time. Another. Somebody said time. Another. Somebody else said serving. We have two servants in time. Helping. What was that? Helping. Helping. Yes. You know, and I thought of. Uh, I did the same thing to myself this week when I thought of volunteer. Uh, first word that came to my mind was willingness. You know, somebody's uh, willing. And of course, it includes everything uh, that you had said. The church is grounded and founded in the head of the church, which is Jesus Christ. But the Bible presents this picture that in the body of Christ, well, I already gave it away as a body and there's a lot of different people with different backgrounds and cultures and <laughs> genders and races and, and uh, there's just all kinds of people that come in but in order for this body of Christ to work in order for the machine to work well and function we need volunteers you have to have volunteers. Now, there are very few positions in our local Seventh-day Adventist congregations that are paid positions. We have a couple of paid positions ourselves in the church. Everything else is volunteer. Everything else. And we're not like these big, huge mega churches. And I don't say this in a critical way. 
but we're not like <coughs> big mega churches where they may have 20 staff members that have that are full-time positions um, the way our financial structure and organizational structure works in the Seventh-day Adventist Church we can't really do that um, because we spread the blessings out financially around the world everything just doesn't stay here locally but we need volunteers would you open your Bibles up to Exodus chapter 36 I have always always been intrigued with this passage. Exodus 36. I've always liked this passage. Exodus chapter 36. Now, the background of this is you have to go way, way back a few thousand years when uh, Moses was the leader of God's people. They had just, uh, they had come out of Egypt, and now they're spending, uh, they didn't begin themselves, there were some people who didn't believe that God would, could really take them to the promised land, so they had to spend 40 years in the wilderness. It was really this time in the wilderness that God said, you know, while they're in the wilderness, uh, they're so used to icons and figures and statues that they witnessed in Egypt um, and so used to seeing these other gods being worshipped and praised he says uh, I need to show them uh, about myself Yahweh the true God and uh, God had used the popular cultural icons of that period and that time and he used it to his advantage and he told them I'm also going to have you make a temple and build some things and figures and statues etc um, but what he did was told Moses to build a copy of it of what existed in heaven it's very interesting and so because they came out of Egypt and they plundered the Egyptians with gold and gold and silver and many things um, God had asked them, you guys need to volunteer and make the contributions so that we can start melting down the gold, melting down the silver, melting down the silver, uh, the bronze, and start making the sanctuary. That's what they did. So the people that plundered the Egyptians, you know, they all had this stuff. They started giving. And I love what Exodus 36 and verse 6 says. It says, so Moses issued a command and a proclamation was circulated throughout the camp saying, let no man or woman any longer perform work for the contributions of the sanctuary. Thus the people were restrained from bringing any more, for the material they had was sufficient and more than enough for all the work to perform it. Now I have a question for my treasure that's sitting back there. Scovo, wouldn't it be cool if you were to have to come and take this mic and say, stop giving offerings, we need a little over $4,000 a month, we have three times as much as we need. You can stop now. Wouldn't you like to make an announcement, go? <laughs> well, this is exactly what's happening here. Why? Why did they have more than enough? Why did they have to say, stop? You've already given enough. Why? Because of this spirit of volunteerism. Because of this, what you had said this morning, this time and good heart um, to do something, to give something, to contribute, to take the time to go through their things of the plunder and let's give this, let's give that. And the next day, you know what, we gotta give some more. Or what I said, this willingness, this spirit of volunteerism was so prevalent and deep and uh, expressed with a gratitude and appreciation from the people. They had more than enough. They had a lot, actually. You know what Proverbs 11.25, if you want to turn with me to Proverbs 11.25, there is a concept here that holds true. It is a truism that rings throughout Scripture. And it is found... In that book of wisdom, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 25. 
And this is what the verse says. The generous man will be prosperous, and he who waters will himself what? Be watered. And this is the concept that rings true. What goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. That's the concept. In fact, Jesus repeated this concept in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, blessed are those who are merciful, for they shall what? Receive mercy. Blessed are you if you help others in their need, in their time of need, with your finances, or with your time, or with your talents. However, because what goes around comes around. You yourself will be watered. The same holds true in a negative sense. Those who are not merciful, those who are mean, those who are cold, those who are indifferent, those who are selfish, don't expect blessings to come your way through other folks. That's basically the golden rule. And this spirit of volunteerism holds true. If you volunteer and give your time and talents and you <coughs> offer help, it's going to come back to you. You yourself will be watered. Now, you may not receive a big pat on the back and a reward and a certificate and sometimes not even a word of thanks from people, but God will bless you. God will bless you. And this is the value of volunteers in our church. God's church, as I put in the bulletin, it's a repository for skills and talents and generosity uh, and willingness and uh, different features of yourself that you can give to the church. This is what the church needs, and you are valuable. You are valuable. You are the life and blood of this church. This is what makes the church move. Last week, um, I meant to put some pictures of our talent show. How many of you enjoyed the talent show last Saturday night? It was, good talent. I see your smiles and your hands going up. Good talent. We had some good talent in the church. We had a lot of fun last Saturday night. Um, and good eats as well. But you saw our talents last week. You saw the talents from handbells to playing a trumpet and doing a Rubik's Cube at the same time to uh, kid actors and the skit and songs and singing. And uh, it was just, it was great. It was great. You're the lifeblood. Jesus the head and you and I his body. One more text I want to share with you, and you know this text very well. Go to Acts chapter 4, and then we're going to close with a few remarks I have that I'm going to invite you to go into the assembly room. In Acts chapter 4, <coughs> this is, uh, the church has just been launched. It's getting started. It's getting off on, you know, it's hitting the ground, and uh, the church has flesh and bone, and it's expressing itself, and it's taking off uh, flying colors. And Acts chapter 4 says here, towards the end of the chapter, it says in verse 32, the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And not one person claimed that what was his or hers is his or hers. Not one person claimed that things were so, but they all had uh, things were in common property to them. Verse 34 says, There was not a needy person among them, for all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and bring those profits to the apostles. And I emphasize that word profits. They may not have brought every single cent of what they sold, but they brought the profits probably kept some for themselves, but they brought the profits. Some others brought everything. As it goes in the next chapter, there was a couple, a married couple, that lied and pretended, yeah, this is everything that we have, and kept back some of it for themselves. I think they wanted to give some heirs to the local congregation that 
Wow, they're generous. Look all the money they brought. They're really generous. They were looking for human praise, and they got in trouble for it, to <laughs> read chapter 5. <coughs> but the people of, in the early church there in Jerusalem, they were great volunteers. They all wanted to contribute. They all wanted to do something for the church. <coughs> That's the value of volunteers. You want to do something. It's for God. You, you just want to do something. You want to help out. For the good of the body. And that's how our local churches function. We don't pay less to be an elder. We don't pay Judy to be a health ministries director. I, we're not paying Robert here to film me so that movie stars can see this sermon and start contributing money to our church. We, don't, we didn't pay Rosa for doing the children's story. Uh, in fact, I never even called Robert and said, hey, can you film my messages from now? I didn't even ask him that. He did out of his own, own will. Hey, I'm going to be taking a shirt. Go for it. We need you as volunteers. We need your skills, your skill sets, your talents, your time. Now, um, before we go to the assembly room, I do want to say this about volunteerism. Sometimes it's hard work, amen? It can be hard work. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it can be a thankless job. It's rewarding because if you do it for the right reasons, If you help out in a ministry for the right reasons, be careful with your motives for the right reasons. It's rewarding because you know ultimately you're doing it for God's honor and glory. So don't expect all the fireworks to go off and wow, you did a great job because that may not happen all the time. But that's not why you're in it, right? That's not why you're in it. It is hard work, but because you're not getting paid, I can't fire you, and I can't say, you better do this, this is the deadline, or else. Because I'm not your boss, you're not getting paid. That happens in the work or working world out there. But here, we all rely on our faithfulness to do things on time, to not be mediocre in your efforts, but to do your best. That's why I really like the children's story. It wasn't mediocre. To do your best, to give it your all, to delegate, to ask for help, to be wise. In fact, our leaders, when the leaders go into that room and sit in your seats, you'll notice a small document on your seat that I put for you, and it gives you five tips on how to be a good leader of great volunteers. Um, and so read that. So what I want to do right now is have a prayer, invite the leaders to go to their spots, and then we'll dismiss you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this church. We love our church. We thank you, God. We have so many great, amazing, and valuable volunteers in this church. We're all important. Doesn't matter what one does, we are all contributing in one way or another. We're all important. We thank you, Jesus, for you volunteering to come to our world and so being exemplary in this, being our ultimate model of volunteerism. Continue to bless our Tempe Church and all of our sister churches. And we pray for your blessing at our job fair. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so the leaders are dismissed. Um, so you can go ahead and over there now what I want you to do is we'll be there for about 15 minutes about 15 minutes there's sign up sheets for you to go over and sign up in a ministry and uh, be back in 15 minutes because we are going to come back here pray have a closing a song 
and then we'll dismiss you. So this is how it works. Let me give you some more detail. When you go into the assembly room, we have tables set up in the perimeter of the room, and there are sign-up sheets for each ministry. For example, uh, newsletter. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet for newsletter. If you're interested in writing an article or helping out with our church newsletter, what you're going to do, or whatever ministry it may be, you're going to write your name and your phone number. Please write legibly. There's a pen there for you. The other thing I want to mention is um, our leadership positions must be Tempe Seventh Adventist members here. Our assistants, by and large, are members of our church as well. In some cases, depending on the ministry, in some cases, it may not be a full-fledged member of the church. For example, if somebody wants to help in a children's division to play the piano, for example. So in some cases, there may not be, you may not have to be a Tempe or an Adventist, a member of an Adventist church. However, if that describes you, so I want to let you know, we review all, the, all of the names first. The other thing I want to mention is, in the room, there's a section for Sabbath school, of Sabbath school assistants. Those assistants may be helping to teach a lesson or a mission story for the kids, etc. Those are positions where we do expect them to be Adventist, members of the Adventist church. And the other thing is, it had, if it has anything to do with children, whether it's vacation Bible school, in fact, I'm gonna be behind the vacation Bible school sign up sheet because my wife is out of town, she's the leader, so I'll be her substitute. But if anything has to do with ministering with children, Pathfinders, Vacation Bible School, the children's Sabbath school classes, etc. And if you're gonna be a regular assistant, you must go through what we call child protection and safety training. You must, that is, that is a requirement. In our day and age, working with children, we wanna protect ourselves and we wanna more so protect the children and so you have to go, you have to take, go online and take a certain, I think it takes half an hour and an hour, I can't remember, um, certain test, then you'll be certified, you went through that training. And there's also a background check. And so, and this again, in this day and age, if there's somebody in the church that has a questionable background that has to do with improper behavior towards children, that is going to come up the background check and you will not be able to work with children. And in fact, that describes you, you won't sign up for children anyways because we're gonna do a background check on you. Um, we're protecting our children, amen? amen? And so you'll see a little bit of that statement in some of those sign-up sheets that have to do with children. Okay, so you ready to go into the assembly room? Come back here in 15 minutes, you're all dismissed, you can just all stand up and then start heading on over into that room. So go ahead, don't be shy, stand up and start walking over, thank you. Be back here in 15 minutes. We got the no's, the amens, and the not yet's. Um, our job fair, this isn't meant to be the final word. If, um, if you wanna join something later, then you can just uh, talk to me and I'll direct you to the leader of that ministry. And so it's not, it's not too late if you didn't sign up, there's still opportunity. The other thing I wanna mention before, as they come in, is um, the final Empire event, which starts this Thursday. I wanna thank you. I know you're giving out those postcards because we're getting emails because people can register online, which is the website is written on that postcard that you share. And we already have members of the community signing up. So we're gonna be here Thursday night. Uh, those who are, may not be Adventist members, if you know who you're inviting. And uh, the other thing I want to mention is, we only have until Thursday. How many of you did not receive this Final Empire prayer card? If you want to pass out this prayer card, um, can, Les, can you help me, and can you volunteer to pass this out? So I have mine. I have five, maybe six names that I wrote. So hold your hand up really high. Les is going to pass out these prayer cards. What this card is for is 
you write the names of the persons on the back that you're going to invite for Final Empire. Now you may have invited them already, so that's great. But if you haven't yet, write their names, pray for them, for the, like I was praying this week, Holy Spirit, open their hearts that they may be receptive. The people I'm gonna invite are some of our neighbors that I know here in our community. And um, can, I, can I give you a very important uh, truth? The more you pray for other people to know Christ, the more you pray for that, the more your heart is going to be touched by God, and you will want to invite and speak to that person. It just holds true. If I'm praying for Bob, Bob is one of the neighbors just behind our church here, and I, I'm praying for Bob, please God, open his heart, open his heart. I'm gonna be anxious to go visit him and invite him and talk to him, because I'm praying for him. And that's what prayer for people does. It gives you that heart of mission for that individual. And so that's why these prayer cards are designed. So please, again, we um, we need to be inviting people to see these things. Okay, so thank you for signing up. And I think some of our members uh, had already left. But uh, let's go ahead, I'm gonna invite Rose Mary to come on up. She's gonna direct our last hymn. <coughs> 